Okay, welcome to our lecture online. And our next basic shape we're going to talk about is what we call the trigonal bipyramidal shape. What those are basically two three-sided pyramids glued base to base. So we have a pyramid sticking up and a pyramid sticking down with the two bases together. Three-sided pyramids, that's why the name trigonal bipyramidal. And those are formed, we have molecules in this shape, and we have one central molecule, uh, one central atom, and five appendages, five terminal atoms making up the whole molecule, make up the shape of the molecule. For example, we have phosphorus pentachloride is one of those molecules. So one central and five appendages. So what happens is we have the central atom, phosphorus. We have three chlorine, chlorines in the plane around phosphorus. That forms the base of the two pyramids, one sticking up, one sticking down. And then we have one atom up here, one atom up there. Notice when we connect these three chlorines to the top chlorine atom, we get ourselves a pyramidal shape like that. You can see we have one side here, one side there, and one side on the back. And again at the bottom, if we connect these right here and this one from the back like that, you can see you have three-sided pyramids sticking, sticking downward as well. Now notice the bond angles between the chlorines and the plane are 120 degrees each. The bond angles between the plane, of course, the atom up straight up and the atom straight down is 90 degrees in both directions. So what happens now when one of those chlorines is replaced by a free electron pair? For example, when we have sulfur tetrafluoride, there we have one sulfur which has initially six valence electrons. So let's draw the Lewis structure down and see what it looks like. So we have a sulfur with six valence electrons and we have four fluorines. So like that. Notice the fluorine uh, atoms, they have seven valence electrons each. That means they have still six free electrons, one that's taken up in the bond. So that gives them the seventh one right here, six free electrons, one taken up in the bond, six free, free electrons, and six free electrons, like that. Now, sulfur started out with six free electrons. Uh, that means four of them were taken up in the bonds. That, has, that means it has two more left over, so you have one additional free electron bound pair like that. What happens when that now resets itself in a molecular shape? Now obviously these two electrons are going to have a greater repulsive force against these electrons sticking up in the bonds. So where will, that elect where will that free electron pair be? Will it be up here or down here or will it be on one of the sides? Well it turns out if we were to place the free electron pair up here it would then have to compete repulsively against the three sets of electrons right here, which are only at 90 degree angles away from this one right here. So there would be a, a strong repulsive force, not a likely scenario. If you place the free electron pair over here, it would only have two, one up here and one up here that's at 90 degrees. The other two would be starting out at 120 degrees, further away, much less a repulsive force. So it's much more likely that the free electron pair will be in one of these three positions and that's exactly what's going to happen. So what happens then, let's draw this out we have here. The, we have one free electron pair in the plane. I'll draw it right here. We have then one chlor, uh, well in this case we'll fluorine, one fluorine there, one fluorine there. We have the central atom up here. Then of course we have the atom up here and then we have the atom down there. Notice now that since the repulsive forces between this free electron pair and those electrons in those bonds, since those repulsive forces are greater, the bond angle in here will get smaller. Instead of 120 degrees, this bond angle over here is now only about 116 degrees. Also, since these electrons are pushing against electrons in the bond here and the bond there, and the repulsive forces are greater here, then what you'll find is that these electrons will get pushed over a little bit in this direction. Let me use a, a red pen to indicate that. So these will get slightly pushed in this direction. These will get slightly pushed in these directions. So it's kind of pushed off in such a way that this new bond angle here, instead of being 180 degrees, it's now 186 degrees. So about an extra three degrees on each side. So it still has the basic shape of a trigonal bipyramidal, except the pyramid is now a little bit lopsided in this direction and the base is no longer perfectly a perfect equilateral triangle. It has a slightly smaller angle between these two uh, atoms and a, bit, a little bit bigger angle between the free electrons and those atoms right there. What happens now when we have one additional atom disappear and replaced by a second free bond pair? What would that look like, for example, with chlorine and 
and trifluoride right here. So what happens now is, take, let's take a look, we, have, we start out with seven free electrons, so let's draw the Lewis structure of that one. So we start out with the central atom is chlorine. It has seven free electrons, so plenty of atoms to bond with the fluorine, like so. Uh, these have seven electrons, so they have each three free electron pairs, like so. But notice that chlorine started out with a total of uh, seven free electrons, Three of them are already taken up in the bonding. That means it has four left over. So that means it ends up with two free electron pairs. Now those two free electron pairs will take positions somewhere uh, either up there, down there, or maybe over here to the side. What would be the most likely place where they would be? Well, definitely they will repel each other more than any other pair of electrons, especially the ones that are you know, taken up in bonds between the fluorine and the chloride. What's going to happen is since these want to be as far away from each other as possible, the only likely scenario would be that one free electron pair will be down here and one free electron pair will be up there and all the atoms will be in the plane like that. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So let's draw that one out. So here we have the central atom. We have the other three atoms like this. And then we have one free pair that's up here and one free pair that's down there. Now again, because of that, since there's an equal amount of repulsive forces between this free pair and those electrons and this free pair and those electrons, they'll be exactly in the plane. The angles between these again will be 120 degrees and the angle between this one and this one will be back to 90 degrees. Of course, the angle between this one and this one will also be 90 degrees. So it'll be exactly the same as this shape before, except the atoms at the top and the bottom will now simply be taken up by the free electron pairs. But again, the general shape, remember that these are still in an orbital shape, like so, and like so, and because of that, the general trigonal bipyramidal shape is still there, even though there's free electron pairs rather than atoms in their place.